Neuroplasticity is especially important in pain management because it's the concept that our physiology, our neurobiology can change. And so uh, a way that I like to explain it to patients is um, if you're trying to get good at something, let's say shooting a free throw, you practice, 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 you get good at it, you can train into it. In regards to pain, our body can adapt in a similar fashion and it can train into pain. But just like anything else, we could train out of pain because our system is plastic. It's constantly changing and constantly adapting based on our environment. Um, so it's crucial for pain management because it gives the message that this is not gloom and doom, this is not forever, things can change, things can get better. We can train out of it just like you train into it. There's a multiple reasons why people are experiencing pain. It could be driven by physical stressors, it could be driven by non-physical stressors. So the, the important key day one or throughout the process of uh, interacting with the patient is identifying what is their biggest issue that could be contributing to their physical experience of pain. Um, so identifying if it's a physical capacity issue where they're just overloading their body or if it's compounded by non-physical issues like um, you know uncontrolled stress, anxiety disorders or sleep hygiene and, and issues that can be magnifying the pain experience or decreasing their physical capacity to tolerate uh, any type of activity. We need to identify what the primary stressors are in that person whether it's physical or non-physical, and then find a way to intervene to be able to change uh, to provide some relief. That is a fantastic question. Um, that is a fantastic question. And honestly, I don't think we know. But what we do know is that when people are in pain, they do have altered sensory perception. Um, and what that means is your ability to discriminate touch, your ability to recognize where your body is in space, um, how your senses, your visual sense, your auditory sense impacts and changes uh, with pain uh, becomes more sensitive. So the individual becomes more sensitive to any external stimulus, whether it's auditory, visual, or discriminative touch. Um, and they lose that ability to accurately process that information which leads to an amplification of what it is that could be perceived as a threat which could then trigger uh, the pain experience or make it become persistent or magnify it and just alter it. It's a very unique study uh, by Tasha Stanton and her group. And what they're looking at is people with knee osteoarthritis. And so everyone thinks knee osteoarthritis, the pain is coming from your knee because you have arthritis. And what they're finding is that it's a lot of this altered uh, sensory perception, which happens not only at the site of pain, but within the brain itself, in the brain areas associated to what that body region is. And so in their study, what they're doing is they're providing touch stimulation to the knee but the visual input that they're getting is a uh, illusionary field where they're either elongating the leg or shortening the leg. And when this, it's very interesting and it, you need to, to, to see the visual of it, but essentially what it looks like, it's like the leg is getting longer or it's getting shorter. And when the perception matches with what they believed was happening, they had significant reductions in pain, uh, up to 40% reduction in pain. And there was no physical change, there was no injection, there was no medication, yet these people had symptom reduction because what was happening is that you were playing with sensory processing and you were, they were trying to refine it, trying to make it become more accurate and precise within their individual perception of, of what they're experiencing. And so it was pretty, pretty groovy, pretty unique.